Hi, uh, my name is Arundh Mitra and welcome to um, Festive Tech Calendar 2023. Uh, first of all, before I start my speaker session, um, big shout to, to Gregor and Richard for giving me the opportunity to present my work, to speak about my topic. Um, I'm very fortunate, extremely thankful that uh, this is my second time in, in Festive Tech Calendar. Uh, my journey in the Festive Tech Calendar started uh, last year, 2022, when I got the first time the opportunity to speak on this platform. Uh, my topic today is um, uh, Decentralized DevOps. And before I start with it, a little introduction about myself. So uh, my name is Arundh Mitra and I am a Microsoft MVP uh, in Developer Technologies. I am also a Cloud uh, Solutions and DevOps Architect. Uh, technical blogger, speaker, uh, traveler, uh, I mean like a big passion in traveling uh, around the world and my focus is mostly on cloud adoption, architecture, build automation and run in Azure. So this is like, you know, I normally put all my codes and everything in my, in my Git repository, feel free to browse through it. Uh, I have my GitHub stats, my commit histories, uh, the total stacks. Uh, on Microsoft blogs, you know, since I started with them in the year 2022, all the CDs and else. Please feel free to um, to like, fork, uh, if you find anything interesting in my report. Uh, I blog normally in Dev.2. Here you can see that you know all my blogs. Uh, I have uh, written close to a little, little, little less than 50 uh, blogs altogether, and you can find everything in my Dev.2. So this is the place where uh, you can find. Uh, my session nice from there you know i normally apply for all the speaker sessions and you know, call for speakers and everything you know i have my own session nice profile you know and this is also more or less updated um uh, to the best of, of my knowledge uh of course i'm there on linkedin uh, you can find me by the name arindam mitra and you know you can find all the details i am pretty much active in linkedin and as well as in, in twitter so these are basically my um uh, these are basically my profiles you know, where you can find everything about what I'm doing and how I'm, I'm sharing it. So um, coming back to my topic, so this is my topic, Decentralized DevOps. A, a blog has already been published and you know I prepared this uh, topic exclusively for Festive Tech Calendar. Uh, this is how you know, uh, I honor uh, my, my, my presentation to Festive Tech Calendar. So the banner and everything is mentioned out here. Again, you know, big thank you to the to, to the organization uh, organizers to 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 allow me to present my work here. So, let's start and let me explain that um, that what is uh, what is like you know the decentralized DevOps and what is what is I am trying to explain in this uh, in this whole session. So I'll I'll try to keep it very short because you know this is more a conceptual and architecture thing, and I I have a feeling you know after talking to several people after reading. Uh, after going through a different uh, workshop sessions and everything that this is something you know which is typically uh, typically a, a problem statement in most of the organization around the world so um, in my current organization you know we are uh, we were like you know uh, constructively pushed and we were questions that hey why is that you know that azure services and everything has to be deployed by the infrastructure team it is a typical aspect, like, you know, uh, we all come from a data center background. In the data center, of course, you have physical servers, and then you have a virtualized platform, and there is an infrastructure team who is, you know, spinning up VMs, decommissioning VMs, configuring VMs, configuring storage, database, you name it, and all kind of things, you know, we do it. And then, um, uh, we try to replicate the same thing when we move to cloud. Because you know this is what we have been doing in the past, uh, and you know, we we have a certain methodology which we do in in, in on premises and data center, and then we transition to cloud. You know, instead of uh, finding a different way or different mode of operation, you know, we stick to the old traditional way of you know building the infrastructure, handing it over to the application, and then application doing their deployment and uh, making making. Uh, making the application available for, for the users to, to use it. And when we are doing this in cloud, you know, most of the time, you know, since uh, uh, 
whether it's an infrastructure team, whether you call it as a cloud infrastructure team, cloud platform team, whatever you call it, you know, they are one team who is catering the need of all the application owners across the organization, which means that, you know, you are just a small subset of team catering the needs of a big organization with like, you know, thousand or maybe like, you know, 10,000 application and their needs. Ultimately, which means that whenever somebody needs an infrastructure, they again go through the whole ticketing process, raise a ticket and then wait till the time, you know, their ticket will be prioritized, their infrastructure will then be deployed and then the application team can then use it. And this is where we are talking about the decentralized DevOps concept, which means that, you know, knowingly, unknowingly, cloud platform team becomes a critical path of every project delivery. This is what I have written that, you know, that, you know, when we are talking about decentralized DevOps, you know, we have to eradicate, you know, we, we have to think about that, you know, what is the problem statement? The first problem statement is the cloud platform team is always in the critical path of our, all, all the project deliveries. And second is that, you know, all the responsibility still stays with the cloud platform team. With the decentralized DevOps, what we are doing, we are trying to move from left to right, which means that cloud platform team should be maintaining a certain framework. That framework allows developers to deploy their own infrastructure, manage their own infrastructure, build their own application, manage their own application, which means that cloud platform team is no more responsible and they are not in the delivery path, critical delivery path. And this is not going to uh, avoid, uh, I mean, this is not going to cause any delay, again, avoiding any delays and the project delivery timelines. Again, so this is this is in a nutshell that you know what decentralized DevOps means. And I was I was actually basically uh, reading a lot of articles um, and talking to a lot of people as I am trying to explain you. And there was also a magazine which was called We Are Developers, you know, and it was somewhere I think uh, there was a special issue uh, which was which was like published in summer. Uh, I think in February 2023, if memory serves right. Um, and then, you know, they, they actually, there was one of the author, I don't know his name, but, you know, he actually explained it in a very, very good way. And when I read it, I, I felt that, yes, exactly, this is, this is what, you know, I'm thinking. And this is what, you know, my organization is in need of. And um, then what I did is, like, I took some of the concepts that he explained, some of my own ideas, uh, and, you know, I amalgamated it and then I thought that, you know, I'll put it in a blog and this would be a fantastic topic to explain uh, the, uh, the the viewers in the Festive Tech Calendar 2023 that, you know, how DevOps, uh, like, you know, how decentralized DevOps is, is the, is going forward the de facto standard and this is how an organization can grow uh, wherever there is a need of cloud. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, you will have like, you know, maybe 100 people in a cloud platform team and maybe, you know, you will be running, you will be still running in a concept of, the, okay, okay, there is like, you know, 100 projects, so we need 100 engineers, which means that, you know, your scaling methodology is number of resources, number of projects is directly proportional to number of resources. Most of the time it happens, but if you are following a concept of decentralized DevOps, then, you know, of course, you know, you could have a framework with a certain set of people, you push the responsibility, give more responsibility to developers uh, in a very, very constructive way with proper guardrails and best practices, and you are making them more independent, again, on the framework which you have built with all the security, all the governance, all the guardrails you have, but instead of you doing it, you are giving more flexibility to the developers in order for them to do their job and meet their critical timelines. So this is what, you know, I, I try to explain here. Again, uh, this, this is like, you know, as I said that, you know, uh, you can see it in, the, in my screen that, you know, I prepared this exclusively for these, I mean, like, you know, Festive Tech Calendar 2023. And, you know, I put together a small banner, you know, felicitating my token of thanks to all the organizers. Now, um, of course, you know, as uh, like, you know, my, my article, my sessions here, which is available in Dev.2, uh, a copy is also available in my GitHub repository, so you can browse uh, from here, and, you know, the same context is also available in the readme of 
uh, of my GitHub uh, repository. Now, uh, when we are talking about decentralized DevOps, then you have to also understand that, you know, there are, like, you know, what is the, how did we land to the de decentralized DevOps? And in order to understand that, you know, you have to understand all the operating models. So this is what, you know, I try to narrow down. So there are basically three operating models, centralized provisioning model, decentralized provisioning model, and encapsulated uh, DevOps model. Again, centralized provisioning model. It's a traditional old way. There's nothing rocket science out here. It's the same traditional data center approach. You know, all the all the infrastructure, you know, automation, build, run, manage, and maintain is again done by cloud platform team. Again, the request and the and the response model is again an ITSM process, which means that you know when you raise a ticket, developers then need to wait till the time the tickets are completed. And you know, and you know, it again depends upon the priority of the ticket. and know uh, whose ticket's weight is more, whose priority of the project is more, and depending upon that, that we we really provision the infrastructure again, which means that there are delays, there is a lot of wait time, and again, you know, application team cannot move because you know there is the infrastructure is not available, and uh, infrastructure can only be available because you know uh, at the time if the project is a priority because. Uh, in every organization, you know, you have a, a very small, medium-sized cloud platform team catering all the needs from all the application across organization, horizontally. Um, then again, the decentralized provisioning method. Again, it means that, you know, we are pushing the responsibility, which means that, you know, we are, we are building a framework, uh, like, a, like where a self-service framework, for example, where the application team is basically building the infrastructure. Again, the infrastructure which they are building is based on the framework which we have uh, developed with certain guardrails, security, governance, and everything. And you know, um, in this way, we are making them independent. There is no wait time. There is no delays. We are not in the critical path. And you know, uh, we are maintaining. So the cloud platform team's responsibility is to maintain the framework and not to deploy infrastructure per project. So that responsibility we are shifting to developers, which means a development team or an application team, we us with the decentralized DevOps model, we are saying that you build, you run, which means that you are now owning the entire platform from infrastructure standpoint, from data standpoint, and from the um, application standpoint. So the whole operational thing moves from cloud platform team to to the development team. And what is the encapsulated uh, uh, DevOps model? So in any organization, this is what I try to write in a very, very simple way. Uh, in any organization, um, the count of the developers are, um, it's, it's always higher. So, you know, you will see, like you know, every team, every uh, every department, they will have a development team, an application team, and those teams' strength is always higher than the cloud platform team, or a DevOps engineer, or, or a DevOps engineer team, or you name it. And then becomes you know uh, having like you know, so we like you know as a cloud platform team, we build a self service with all the governance guardrails, best practices, everything. And we are asking the application team to deploy their infrastructure based on the framework which we are offering. Okay. Now we have the framework, and now they need to deploy. It can happen that the application team they do not have any immediate resource who is capable of uh, deploying the infrastructure or understanding the framework which cloud platform team has developed. So, you know, it can happen that, you know, every application development team, you know, they have a dedicated DevOps engineer or maybe there is a pool of DevOps, uh, DevOps engineer or cloud, cloud engineers who are, basically, um, who are basically deploying the infrastructure for the application team. But again, those people are from the application side. They are not the part of the team. They are not part of cloud platform team. So this is what you know, I try to I try to say that you know it's an encapsulated DevOps model where again you know there are cloud engineers but again 
they can be of course you know dedicated to the application team but those engineers are not part of the cloud platform team who is maintaining the framework but uh, those are all uh, like you know as a part of a application team or maybe a pool of team from where you know resources are working in multiple projects but those are not part of the cloud platform team which is basically developing uh, and maintaining and managing the framework around which the developers are using and deploying the infrastructure so so centralized provisioning model decentralizing provisioning model and uh, encapsulated devops model so these are the three operating model which uh, which you have to understand and in order for an organization to be more and more cloud agnostic you have to move to decentralized provisioning model that's uh, that's going forward uh, uh, like the the most uh, recommended way of you know scaling and and uh, being more and more cloud agnostic um, so as i said like you know decentralized devops uh, as we were discussing it is again not a it's 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 typically a model uh, or a frame or a platform or a framework but it is definitely not a project or a team it's a as i said it's a framework or you could call it a model or platform anything you can call it but of course this is not a project this is not a team and uh, as i said that you know we this is a this is again a shared responsibility where we are managing and maintaining the model framework or platform whatever you call it and and the consumers are basically the application team to whom we are making them independent of deploying their ownership so it's more more and more you know giving more and more flexibility ownership in building managing operating their own infrastructure and the most important thing the tagline of the whole decentralized devops is you build you run and this gives more agility this gives more flexibility to the development team <clears throat> of course you know this is more on the technical part that you know how we are doing it but this also means that an organization needs to make a cultural shift uh, uh, that that the responsibility is now moving towards the development team, and when I say the responsibility, it means the entire stack of responsibility, structure, application, which includes, which can or may or may not include data, and the op operations during business hour, after business hours. So, um, so technically, is it possible? Yes, it's possible, but. If technically it's possible, you also have to get an acceptance from the organization, which means that your organization also needs to accept that cultural shift. It's only then you can you can basically deploy uh, the decentralized DevOps model uh, in your organization. Um, then uh, um, I, I I also mentioned in, in my point four, you know, in, in the screen when you reading the concept document the point four I, I felt that in the need of you know highlighting that um, not only on the cultural shift but also from the, the from the technical angle I said that yes it is possible from the organization I'm saying that you know it is going to uh, be only possible if organization is accepting the cultural shift but in order for this DevOps a decentralized DevOps to be successful and you know correctly onboarded uh, it also completely depends upon the maturity and the preference by shifting the responsibility towards developers. This is what I, I, I highlighted because, you know, when I say organization has to accept the cultural shift, organization is made of all, all different leagues of people. And in order for organization, techni technical-wise, organization-wise, and, and the third most important aspect is that, you know, what is the maturity uh, of your application team in order to accept uh, the, the shifting responsibility towards them? Are they accepting it? Are they pushing back? How is it? You know, so unless and until you know, you're calculating all the aspects, you know, it's very difficult to comprehend that you know, whether or not you know, you'll be able to uh, successfully implement decentralized DevOps. That is why you know I, I try to explain that this is not this is not a project this is not a team this is a framework this is a model and uh, this is a methodology this is a platform whatever you want to say it you know, in a different way but 
this is definitely not a project and this is not a uh, not a team um i mean like of course you know when we say about deploying infrastructure yes you know we want to give more flexibility and agility to uh, to to development team but uh, again you know there are certain governance you know around uh, around uh, around infrastructure which would definitely still be staying with the cloud platform team so as we said we want to give more and more responsibility we want to get more and more freedom we want to we will definitely not try to be in the critical part but again uh, in the decentralized devops principles as well there will be centralized governance or responsibility which will still remain with the cloud platform team because you know we require some kind of a guardrails and then you know um, so this is this is typically around you know everything feel free to feel free to read through my blogs you know but this is what i was trying to explain to you that you know what and how and what is the methodology what is the operating model uh, what is the concept and everything and this is what i try to explain in the last uh, minutes so if like you know we are we are giving this responsibility to to developers then the million dollar question always is that like you know are we going to uh, is the cloud platform team you know will they lose jobs or uh, what should we do uh, we have no work uh, because you know uh, we are giving all the responsibility to the application team because you know we were building earlier the infrastructure and and we were doing the infrastructure as a code there are so many questions which comes on uh, towards the cloud platform team and of course you know this is also one of the reasons uh, that you know it is very difficult to implement such methodology in any organization because you know there's always the insecurity around and the uh, insecurity around and there are so many questions coming up you know because you know you see it as uh, giving away your piece of work to others so what will you do and this is what and I try to explain that even if you if we are moving this responsibility towards application team, it doesn't mean that the cloud platform team, the engineers, or the team uh, which is which is uh, which is making this cloud platform team, they are going to lose their job. No, the, the most important is that there will be a tons of work because you build the in framework. Development team, application team, as using that framework but you still need to maintain it. When I say maintain it, you still need to do enhancements in your modules. You still have to patch your modules, you have to bug fix your modules, you know, all the things, you know, when the application team is going to deploy it, anything, you know, related to your framework, your self-service, your infrastructure as a code, which they are using. And if it is not working, you have to fix the bugs, you have to enhance the code, you have to do lifecycle management of all the versions providers. You have to keep on building the new modules. There are tons of work which you have to do around that self-service. And it's a mammoth of work, believe me. It is, uh, uh, it is just that you are moving away from the classical approach of you know, supporting the project from day one and building the infrastructure, troubleshooting, making the networking work, making the hybrid connection, firewall, DNS, you name it. You're just moving out from that whole traditional way of operation. And then you're moving to a place where you are actually uh, contributing to the self-service. You are actually helping the developers to use your modules, your self-service, guiding them, coaching them, training them, um, uh, fixing the bugs, enhancing the modules supporting the framework, version management, patch management, uh, life cycle management, you name it, and you are basically moving from a, a, a cloud project engineer to cloud center of excellence. That is a transition you are making. And this is what, you know, it comes with the decentralized efforts. Again, you know, uh, this is this is what is the is the responsibility of the cloud platform team, and this, this is what I'm trying to answer, that it doesn't mean that, you know, you are losing anything. It's a win-win situation both for the application team and the cloud platform team. You are basically doing what you are supposed to do. This is how cloud works. 
and application team is also getting getting freedom with certain guardrails. So it's a win-win situation, and this is how you can scale. In this way, uh, you don't have to scale, or cloud platform team doesn't have to scale by hiring like you know like uh, uh, like countless resources, and you have no idea that what those resources are going. But again, if you are just moving the responsibility towards the development team, you know they anyways have strength more than cloud platform team. Either they can have one existing person from the application developer and taking the responsibility of deploying the infrastructure using our self-service uh, with a certain guardrails or they are mixing the decentralized DevOps with the encapsulated module where uh, you know there is an uh, operations team there from there you know they are taking one resource one from the pool and they are basically coordinating <coughs> with cloud platform team in order to deploy the resources uh, for the application so it's a win-win situation this is how you scale this is how you grow and this is this is the way forward uh, where you get time to think about all the enhancement all the releases which Microsoft is making uh, and this is how you learn and grow um, so uh, this is this is this is something and then you know with this this thing you know we are also uh, making it to a point that we are giving the flexibility to the developers that you guys can also uh, contribute to the self-service which means that for example like you know I have built a module on container apps and I, I, I build a module you know based on, on the requirements that okay in the past projects you know when we were working as a cloud operations engineer and everything we saw that container apps you know this 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 we we have a certain use cases and we build it as a module now, in certain projects, when a development team starts to build a container apps, he saw that, okay, you know, uh, one till five requirement is matching, but the sixth requirement is missing, and I cannot find the module in the central repository. So, there are two possibilities. So, there's two paths. The development team raises a request to the cloud platform team and says that, hey, your this module is missing in your self-service, and they, they wait till the time it is available, or... The development team is actually building the module and then they are raising a PR, a pull request to the cloud platform team. And cloud platform team then sees the code and sees that, oh wow, uh, they have built this code, okay, this was missing. Uh, the code which the development uh, developer has written, uh, does it match my standard? Uh, is it in the same pattern like what we are doing? Uh, so based on that, you know, we approve or reject. So in most of the cases, of course, we will approve because you know they have taken an effort. If we need to make any changes, of course, we will make those changes and and revert back and we will release that module. So again, we are not falling on the traditional path of the waiting time and everything. We are also giving the flexibility of the developers to basically contribute, not only to behave as a cons consumer, but to also contribute to our self-service DevOps platform or the framework or the model. Um, so <clears throat> this is this is how you know uh, we we uh, I mean like you know I wrote this article, but this is what you know I'm trying to explain, and this is what you know we are trying to implement in our organization as well. Uh, version management and uh, these uh, customizer how customized it can be transparency self service documentation everything. So these are basically. Uh, the the key points you know uh, when we are when we are basically implementing the decentralized DevOps. Let's let's quickly dive in into into all the uh, points which were mentioning. So of course you know you have a platform, uh, you know the methodology, you know what development team has to do, you know what cloud. But still you know it's always good to um, go back to the basics, which is what are the fundamental principles to enable a decentralized DevOps model platform? So, of course, version management. We have a platform. We are building modules. Of course, we are, when we are building modules, of course, you know, there will be a certain version. But maybe, you know, uh, we made some bug fixes or we made some enhancement, of course. So we have to keep on doing the version management. And we have to make uh, the release and that release can 
uh, I mean, like you know, we have to do it in a way where developers teams can can also consume the latest uh, what is what your module is offering. So this is this is what we meant by um, by the version management because you know it's not like you know you build a self service and then you said oh my my job is done. No, it doesn't work like that because that's that's the first iteration. But but what happens like you know for example you build a storage account you build a storage account and uh, you know it has firewall rules it has private endpoints and um, uh, it has the containers and everything. And then all of a sudden that in storage account, you know, they brought the feature of SFTP. So, so far, you know, SFTP was not required, but maybe once the SFTP is available, maybe one project requires SFTP and your module doesn't have it. So you have to enhance it. When you're enhancing and adding that feature in your storage account, then you have to again make a release. So maybe the application team is using a previous release of your module, which doesn't have the uh, the SFTP feature of storage account, so they have to bump up their version to the version which you have released to get that SFTP feature available. That is what is uh, what I meant as far as version management. Customizable, of course, you know uh, how I mean, like you know how customize and improvement feature requests, you know, and uh, this is again uh, this can be like you know cloud platform doing it. On a, on a daily basis, you know, this this is by primary primarily our framework, and we have to manage and maintain. Or you know, if the development team finds something is making, they can also raise a pull request. Um, then transparency, of course, you know, all the codes and everything which is consumed by the application team. This is again, you know, it has to be visible, it has to be made available, and we are going to we are going to have make this available as like in a similar concept of GitHub, which is called the inner source, which is like an internal open source code where anybody can, can use it and contribute it. So it's again, you know, the transparency is key out here. Uh, Self-service again, you know, it means, you know, it's very simple. You know, we are moving the responsibility from cloud platform team to, to application team. So, you know, we are again getting ourselves away from the self-serve, I mean, like uh, the critical path. Um, finally, any self-service or any such kind of a decentralized DevOps can only be successful if you have exhaustive documentation, you are explaining everything, you know uh, how to guide your people, you know, and uh, that is why the written documentation has to be flawless. It has to be very, very simple. Uh, you need to explain as much as possible in the most simplest language. Um, as if like, you know, you're explaining a kid that, you know, things so you have to be that uh, you have to be and you have to have documentations on those level and you know of course you know there has to be a lot of process you know which clearly states that in the decentralized DevOps concept or model or platform um, what is in scope and what is out scope because you know otherwise uh, otherwise it would be very very difficult uh, to handle such a framework Another aspect is uh, is to have like you know a clear process around how to handle improvements, how to handle new features, how to handle pull requests, and uh, how to handle release and rollback. Because first thing is what is in scope and what is out scope. But there is another aspect of so you know improvements, uh, feature request, uh, pull request, uh, uh, release and rollbacks. So these are also something you know which you need to have a proper process. Uh, because otherwise, you know, it is very difficult because the framework will grow and at one point of time, you know, you have to manage it properly and these processes help in those things. Uh, finally, you know, uh, I, I try to explain that, you know, implementing DevOps, decentralized DevOps uh, model platform, you know, consider this as more like a PubSub model. And this PubSub model is clubbed together with GitOps principle. How pub sub model? Pub means publisher, sub means subscriber. Okay. Cloud platform team is basically building the framework and making it available to developers. So basically, we are publishing. What we are publishing? You know, we are basically publishing uh, the repeatable deployment templates 
in order for the development team to deploy the infrastructure. And of course, the development team is a subscriber, which means that you know, they are using our framework, our templates to deploy the infrastructure. And now, we said that you know it's pops up model with GitOps principle. Of course, you know this is all infrastructure. These templates we are talking, these are all maybe infrastructure as a code with the YAML pipelines, and these are all version control and Git. And these are all orchestrated by CID CD principle. So this is what we mean by GitOps principle that you have infrastructure as a code maintained in Git, which is triggered by a CI CD pipeline. So this is what is implementing uh, the. Uh, methodology, uh, publisher, subscriber, and uh, of course, you know, the accessibility, which is basically nothing but, you know, GitOps principle. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, like, uh, this ends uh, what I want to explain. Again, uh, feel free to, uh, feel free to read my uh, article. And I, I hope that in this short video, in my short presentation, I could explain you everything that you know what I meant by decentralized DevOps. Uh, if you like it, uh, like my articles and everything, uh, uh, please like it. Uh, uh, it's also available in GitHub, it is available in DevDoc2 and you know uh, if you have any any feedback, comments, anything, please write write me back. Um, all my details are available in GitHub. Um, it is also like you know available in my dev doc too, so you can find all my my details out there. So again, give a read um, and uh, let me know that you know how you like my my article, my blog. I, I try to I try to explain uh, in the most simplest way. Uh, the article is not at all big, you know. It's just like a, a, a like you know, three or four minutes, maximum five minutes of read. I try to articulate. Um, all the basic principles you know, which can help you to to build such kind of a methodology in your organization. Um, I am doing the same. Uh, this is work in progress in my current organization. I, I try to pen down all my thoughts. I'll keep on writing. I'll keep on updating uh, to all my uh, readers and audiences. But uh, again, you know, your feedback is most welcome. Check my GitHub. Check my DevDoc too. You can find all my details, email addresses, LinkedIn. Twitter, Sessionize, you name it, and they're everywhere. I'm also very active. I keep on writing blogs, automations, and everything. So reach out to me and let me know how you liked it. Again, thank you so much uh, for listening to my speaker sessions. I hope I could explain you. And again, thank you so much to all the organization of Festive Calendar to give this opportunity to present my work uh, in this fantastic platform. So uh, until next time, uh, thank you again, and I wish you a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, anybody who is in different time zone, in any time zone, okay? So uh, again, thank you so much. See you, bye-bye.